a pleasure to be here representing Deep to Nomads today. I know we're cutting into some coffee cakes, so I'll be brief. I want to take the next five minutes to give an introduction uh, very briefly to the company and then sort of an advertisement for some of the um, machine learning work that we've recently been doing live that will be of interest to this community. Uh, so as a quick introduction, we are a, a drug discovery uh, startup. Our mission is to revolutionize drug development by applying artificial intelligence methods to RNA biology. Uh, we have a fantastic interdisciplinary research team that combines strengths in computational science, especially machine learning, uh, with experimental biology. Uh, we believe that our approach is applicable to a wide range of diseases and different therapeutic modalities. Uh, our, our main focus in the past couple of years has been developing oligonucleotides uh, designed to increase the expression of particular target genes to treat genetic diseases. Uh, so what I want to highlight here is a, a foundation model for RNA biology that a large group of my colleagues uh, published a preprint on back in September. Uh, this is a model called BigRNA. Uh, so BigRNA takes a uh, wide, uh, one-hot uh, encoded DNA sequence as input and fits a number of different um, genomic data tracks, 128 base pair resolution as output. Uh, in this audience, I don't, for this audience, I don't need to spend a lot of time walking through uh, that setup, so I'll highlight some of the distinctive features of this model. Um, we've done a lot of work to incorporate uh, individual um, whole genome sequencing data on the input side and individual uh, RNA-seq um, data sets from the uh, GTEx database uh, on the output side. Uh, so we have data from 70 individuals across up to 51 tissues for each individual that go into uh, the training set leading to 2,956 individual RNA-seq output tracks. Uh, we supplement that with another 700 uh, tracks capturing uh, RNA binding protein binding data as well as microRNA binding. Uh, so we subscribe to this school of thought that says that the key thing about a foundation model is that it can be applied to a range of time-streaming tasks. And if you take a look at the preprint, uh, we go through uh, multiple tasks in a dozen different application domains, but I want to just briefly touch on two uh, that I think will be of interest given discussions uh, yesterday and today. Uh, so the first is that we find that the model does very well at predicting the effects of variants in non-coding regions. Uh, so I've highlighted here a case study where we looked at a known pathogenic variant in the gene NAA10. This is a mutation in the three prime untranslated region of the gene, uh, which is known to decrease expression by disrupting a polyadenylation site. Uh, and this comes out very clearly in the model's predictions. I've uh, shown in blue the predicted RNA seq coverage track uh, for the wild type sequence, in red, the same for the variant sequence. Uh, and you can see the decreased expression uh, looking at the reduced coverage in the exons. Uh, as well as this extension uh, of the high coverage region of the three prime UTR due to the disruption of the poly A site. As you'd hope based off of that anecdote, when we systematically evaluate the model's performance on uh, discriminating between pathogenic and benign variants in five prime and three prime untranslated regions uh, in the ClinVar database, uh, we get quite good classifiers which uh, match or exceed the results from alternative approaches. Uh, finally, coming back around to drug development, uh, what we found is that the model is very good at predicting the effects of steric blocking oligonucleotides in a zero-shot framework. Uh, so for those not familiar with the approach, a steric blocking oligonucleotide basically is uh, a way of saying, all right, I have a functional region or suspected functional region in a RNA transcript. I'm going to synthesize a complementary molecule to bind to it and prevent it from interacting with its natural interaction partners and suppress its function. The, mo the model has never seen data from cells treated with oligonucleotides, uh, but what we find is that you can um, very reliably uh, get good results by taking the binding region of the oligonucleotide and just zeroing out the one-hot encoding of the sequence. Uh, so for instance, um, you can use these molecules to um, modulate splicing, uh, for instance, skipping exons. Uh, and when we go through and pair bid RNA's predictions to internal experimental data from 620 oligonucleotides skipping a range of exons, uh, we generally see quite good correlations between the model's predictions and the uh, exon skipping effects um, across those oligos at a consistent dose. We can compare this to doing a similar uh, prediction approach using Splice AI, which is already a pretty um, sophisticated splicing model. And we see that in this case, going the extra mile or many miles to build a foundation model has gotten us improved performance on this task, which is really relevant to what we want to do. 
um, I'll wrap up there. I'm very happy uh, that the company can support this community. I'm great to be here as a sponsor. Uh, if you have questions about this work or deep genomics, I'm happy to talk. Uh, I'll be around all day today. My colleague Andrew is in the back and can also take questions. Um, we are currently hiring for a director of machine learning. If you know anyone who might be interested, that posting's on our website. Thanks, Eli. Um, so with that, that's the that that's the last talk before the break. So uh, let's take a 10 minute break for coffee and then come back and we'll have another three talks. Okay, yeah, sure. Just logging the screen and share the screen later. Uh, yeah, we we should uh, you should probably check that right now. Are you the next? Oh, uh, I'm the one. The second. Okay. Yeah, I would check it now because I okay, we're I not sure if you have the permissions to share. Uh, it's safe to access the screen now that like for logging yeah, us up. Yeah, can yeah, it will take a second. I think I switched up the warning. Oh, okay. And we're drawing the dog for you. Can you just click on share and just see if it lets you? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when you, um, basically, when you bring your laptop up, we have to put these two in, mm -hmm. and then I have to switch a bunch of settings on. Okay. On so it should be. Okay. So, uh, do we need to open the audio or something else? Yeah, we'll have to do that when we connect it. I see. So I also need to join the audio with my friends. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do you call it your name Ding or how? Gong. Gong? Mm -hmm. Gong. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, this one's not. I think that one's good. What are we doing? Not sure. Have better than better? Oh, yeah, there's a little bit closer to the first one. <laughs> what is that? I have a Um, the question I was going to ask you is So, what is it So, okay, the two things are, one is just the other one is like, tell all the back of the tell all the power of the kind of just like to start, and the last one, so it's not. So, I'm just going to say, like, this is like, I don't think that's on the CI website. Yeah, we did that. So, we tried that. So, we said, yeah, we're going to start. But we did a start when we said, like, yeah, we're going to start. It's really good at this app, like this project app, not like that, but like people gain the free stuff they learn about the project. And it's like, you know, like 68 and 824, they have a really slow being bad in the machine learning level problem because they share the instructions that they did in that way. So it's a little bit harder to do that, but like it's just to get them off the floor and then that's like the like the model that's really interesting. But then I just noticed that the company to 